All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, so it's a real pleasure to have uh, uh, Professor Zahid Hassan from Princeton give us the JQI seminar um, this week. Um, uh, Zahid, uh, Professor Hassan got his, uh, his uh, PhD in 2002 from Stanford University and was then a, a Dickey Fellow uh, at Princeton after that and shortly after that joined the faculty ranks. At, at Princeton. Um, I, I mean, uh, so, uh, well, Zahid has contributed in, in many areas, um, but uh, at least from, from my uh, expertise, the part that we have seen him is that he really pioneered this um, observation of topological states, like in at least in the most visual form. I mean, it, it was sort of a dream for theorists that, hey, there is this prediction of topological insulators and surface states and all that. And Zaid is like, hey, look, this happened. It's, it's, it's for real, right? So this was um, spectacular. And since then, actually, he has really led the discovery using his, at least back then, his favorite tool was ARPES, Angle Result Photo Emission, which lets you just see the surface. Uh, and you can already see some um, beautiful uh, pictures on his slide. So you, you, it, it's best tuned to see the surface states, which are hallmark of topological states. And so he has used that to discover also like while uh, materials uh, and, and a variety of uh, Dirac semi-metals, a variety of other materials that I can't even uh, keep track of at this point. Um, Zahid has uh, uh, many uh, recognitions out of this. He is the U U Eugene Higgins professor at physics since 2017, at, at Princeton since 2017. He's a Vanguard fellow at the Aspen Institute Institutes in 2014, and an elected fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. And maybe I missed something, but uh, anyway, it, it doesn't really, I mean, I'll, I'll let uh, Zahid uh, take it away and uh, Zahid. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, um, I thank the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to present our results one again, once again. Uh, it's, uh, it has been always wonderful to give a JQI seminar. So today I'm, I'm going to talk uh, most primarily new stuff, uh, topological quantum matter, mostly in Jarn, Vial, and Kagome magnets. This is beyond uh, Vial semi-metals, uh, some of the uh, more recent stuff. Okay, so uh, for the broad audience, since I, I'm, 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 I'm told there is uh, AMO and beyond. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll use a few slides to introduce the topic from a broad angle and then I'll go to the magnets. So as uh, Jay was saying last 10 years or so, we have, uh, we have seen a number of topological states of matter. Uh, it's not just a number of uh, topological materials also new states. Uh, what I remember uh, 10 years ago, when we used to teach condensed matter physics, we would tell students it's mostly about metals, uh, insulators, magnets, superconductors, and their symmetry broken or symmetry related variants. So uh, 10 years or so, we, we have seen that uh, there are states of matter, they don't they're not uh, just symmetry related uh, or broken symmetry related states, uh, but there is a new distinction, topolo more uh, subtle uh, at the uh, topology of the wave function level, these distinctions are necessary. And, and we have seen a number of realization of these states. So uh, the first uh, beyond quantum hall, going beyond quantum hall in three dimensional materials, uh, we have seen topological insulators, we have seen magnets with topological properties, we have seen semi-metals that have topological states, we have seen superconductors that are likely to be topological. And uh, in, in, uh, uh, my, my group, in my group uh, with students and postdocs, we have been working on all these uh, states of matter. Uh, as I said, that today I will focus mostly on uh, uh, three classes of magnets that are uh, topological in certain ways. Uh, 
but we are we're working on all all these other other things okay so let me start out thanking my students and collaborators uh, we uh, in experimentally we carry we uh, we utilize uh, arpes and stm um, and we we also have a uh, first principle dft theory program uh, all these are funded uh, funded by doe and uh, moore foundation uh, the 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 results i will talk about today uh, are mostly uh, the thesis or postdoctoral work of Ilya Belopolsky, Su Yang Zhu, Yashin In, Go Ching Chan, Sonia Zhang, and Guang Bian. And some of the some of the students have now moved on to other places and running their own groups. And uh, the samples are from uh, Ramun Shankar, Feng Cheng Chu, uh, CL Zhang, Shuang Zia, uh, some from Nitin Shamart, and a number of other groups around the world. And in addition to our Princeton labs, we also use facilities at uh, the uh, at that advanced light source in Berkeley and Slack, Stanford, sometimes at Brookhaven. Okay, so uh, this is like one slide introduction to topology in condensed matter physics. So the story started with the discovery of quantum Hall effect in 1980. Uh, so the quantum Hall effect tells you that if you apply a strong magnetic field, you in a two-dimensional electron system, you create a uh, gapped uh, spectrum. Uh, your bulk is insulating, uh, but uh, but you can have conduction through the boundary. So uh, in the energy momentum representation, this means you have a chiral uh, edge state, one branch of uh, there is a state in the inside the bulk gap, and in 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 real space, this is uh, the edge current is the boundary current. So uh, so this is kind of like the first topological uh, state described by a single invariant uh, char number, uh, and it turn, it turns out that. It was realized about 15 years ago that if you, uh, it is possible to construct a time reversal invariant uh, 2D topological insulator uh, by considering two copies of the quantum hull. So through the uh, help of spin orbit interaction, which is naturally available in materials. So if you consider two copies of quantum hull, one uh, spin up, one spin down, filled up, filled down, then your energy momentum spectrum would be like this. So now we have this, uh, this creates a Dirac fermion state inside the gap, inside the insulating gap uh, of the system. So now this is where the Dirac equation enters the physics. So, so these, the low energy excitations are described by Dirac equation and that, that brings in quantum field theory like effects. And shortly after uh, the 2D topological insulator, it was realized that uh, there, is a, uh, in, there is some sort of intrinsic 3D topological insulating state which is not just a stack generalization. You can, you can stack these 2D layers, uh, but then this will create a surface state on the side surfaces, but not top and bottom surface. So, uh, so that, uh, that, is, that is still, that, that type of state is still described by a single invariant. In this case, it's a Z2 invariant, uh, but there is a genuinely three-dimensional state that is described by four invariants where you have uh, 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 protected states also on the top and bottom. So this is possible, uh, only possible in time reversal invariant way because now you, you don't have to apply a field. Uh, when you apply a field, you choose a direction. So then, so then that brings you a state, a 2D like state. But this genuine 3D state is possible with spin orbit interaction and in a time reversal invariant way. So now we have a uh, Dirac fermion on odd number of Dirac fermion on uh, 
on the surfaces of this insulator. And this is, um, this is now, uh, this is now totally non-quantum Hall-like topological matter. I like to use the word uh, because it, it also traces the historical uh, sequence why this was called topological insulator because now it, you cannot describe it by any type of Hall effect. Like this is quantum Hall effect, uh, the quantum spin Hall effect, but then there is no Hall effect type thing in this state. So this, uh, so then uh, this is how, it, this is the, one of the reasons why it was called topological insulators uh, rather than topological Hall insulator or something. Uh, so the, then the challenge is if this is described by four invariants, how do you experimentally measure these invariants? Uh, so in, these invariants are uh, measured in a uh, uh, in the way they were discovered, like do you do a transport, Hall transport and uh, quantization uh, coefficient is your uh, invariant. But this is, this is not, these invariants don't couple to transport uh, directly. So that was uh, the challenge we were faced with when we we're uh, doing experiments. Uh, uh, why do we want to measure these invariants? Uh, it's, that's because given, uh, a, given some sort of insulator, you, uh, you have 16 possibilities, two to the four. Uh, so be, it's, it's, there are four invariants and each invariant can have two values, uh, zero or one. So then uh, if all these invariants are trivial, that all these uh, invariants are zero, and that's a trivial insulator, uh, maybe silicon or gallium arsenide. Those are uh, uh, topologically trivial insulators. But then, uh, but then uh, there are at least four, 15 different types of topological insulators in 3D. So the one, so in order to track them, in order to measure them, you have to uh, have a way to track these invariants for uh, each. Um, insulator, it's uh, it sample, okay? So these invariants don't directly couple to it a quantized transport, but uh, uh, there is at least, uh, but the first invariant, which is known as the strong invariant, uh, it has some sort of uh, response function uh, determination. Uh, for example, uh, it, it's, uh, it can be tracked by looking at the magneto electric uh, quantization, magneto electric response of a 3D topological insulator. And, uh, but then these invariants do not have uh, that sort of uh, response function thing. So, so to do a complete measurement of, uh, uh, to completely understand or characterize a 3D topological insulator, you have to then uh, look at or use a method that can track all these invariants. So the method we used uh, in the early days of topological insulator is uh, spin resolve, angle resolve for emission spectroscopy. So, uh, um, so which gives you access to all the degrees of freedom electron can have. So we can look at the, we can measure the energy, momentum and spin. And uh, we can, by tuning photon energy, we can also uh, make it look the, uh, be, make it more surface sensitive or more bulk sensitive. Like if you use a very high photon energy, then you can enter, the photon can enter the bulk and electron has enough kinetic energy to come out of the bulk. So this technique allows us to probe uh, what uh, topologists would call bulk boundary correspondence. So in other words, we are sensitive to electronic states, uh, all degrees of freedom of the associated with the electronic state or electronic wave function that is uh, on the bulk and the boundary. So this allows us to, uh, uh, this allows us to identify the topological state uh, uh, uniquely, okay?
So I'm not going to, these methods are uh, technically somewhat challenging, and I'm not going to bore you with all those technical aspects. Um, so uh, they were, we had to, ARPES is not a new technique, it existed even before Einstein, you know, Einstein got his Nobel Prize for explaining photoelectric effect. So the technique existed before Einstein. So what is new is that how to ut uh, utilize this technique uh, to address particular class of problems. So we uh, spent over past 15 years or so, we have been uh, developing methodology, how to apply this technique to a particular topological state of matter. So the description I just gave, it's just 3D topological instrument. There are many other topological states as I showed in the first slide. Uh, so then you have to develop a, a different experimental algorithm, how to do this. So the top, uh, 3D topological insulator part is reviewed here. Much of the development um, uh, happened uh, around that time. So the, if you're interested, you can look at this review of modern physics article. It has actually about two third of this RMP is ex about these experiments. There's actually very little theory there. Uh, uh, so this is a good starting point for students interested in this experimental topic. Um, and then uh, there, there are a few other later reviews that, uh, that I'll mention. Okay, so let me give you a first example uh, how this technique works in real, with a real sample and what it can tell us. Uh, for example, if you take a, a 3D topological insulator like bismuth selenide or bismuth telluride, uh, what we do, as I said, using photon energy contrast uh, energy change, we can probe the bulk or the surface. So if we tune it to probe the surface, uh, then we see that uh, there is a, this, uh, this crossing uh, protected crossing um, uh, on the surface of this compound and on each branch is a, is a spin filter. There is a particular spin uh, 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 associated with the branch. So then when you look at the full Fermi surface, then we see that, that, that it has, there's a spin winding. Uh, so each momentum is locked to a uh, spin state. Uh, for example, one way to read this is that K plus, if it is spin down, then K minus would be up. So then in real space, uh, the, uh, the picture is kind of like that. And then how do we know this is topological? Meaning that uh, the full picture, it has to be gapless everywhere in the bulk, the surface has to be gapless everywhere in the, uh, in the bulk gap, in the energy momentum spectrum. So we scan, uh, we scan this center range and we see that there is always this spin momentum locking at any, uh, any play, any, anywhere you place your Fermi energy. So then let's say if you're above the Dirac crossing, then you have this uh, chirality, but then uh, below the crossing that you have then uh, counterclockwise chirality. So, uh, so then this is this confirms that this is the double and there's a single degenerate and the, the spin momentum lock uh, locking main, is maintained throughout the gap and uh, and it's all happening on the surface. So then the the full picture is kind of like that. And uh, then you can also look at other surfaces, which is not always possible in all samples. Uh, uh, then you uh, find that there is always odd number of Dirac fermions, one or three or five. Uh, there may be in some surface in, uh, in, in a particular material or in some different materials, you can have additional surface states, but those additional surface states would come in pair. And there's those states are uh, uh, the, those states depend on the chemistry of that surface. So we had to uh, we figured uh, we sorted out all that stuff, and that's why you see that I'm summarizing three figures, three papers in a in a single slide. So all those things have been sorted out uh, 
and detailed in these three papers. Okay, so the, the simplest scenario that is emerging that if you take a 3D topological insulator and place the Fermi level inside the bulk gap, then you will have a scenario like this. In real space, uh, it will be uh, like this. Uh, here you have uh, insulating bulk and conducting surface, but uh, conducting surface in a very special way that uh, yeah, it, the surface conduction is through helical Dirac permeance. Okay, so what is the transport consequence of all of that? Uh, uh, this, uh, this you can also read uh, it from here that it, an electron trying to take a U-turn, uh, there is no available state unless you flip the spin. That means you have to have some sort of magnetic impurity or magnetic field breaking time reversal. So this is what is meant by this topological insulators are protected by time reversal symmetry. So as long as you, your uh, time reversal symmetry is there, this backscattering is not allowed. Uh, uh, so then absence of backscattering is, is a signature of uh, topological surface or edge uh, in two dimension. Uh, this can also be directly uh, seen by looking at the quasi-particle scattering uh, using an STM quasi-particle interference pattern that the backscattering is forbidden. So now if you, so 1D channels of such a thing in a 2D topological insulator would be nearly dissipationless. Uh, so if your gap is large enough, then you could even reach uh, room, room temperature near dissipation, uh, dissipation, uh, dissipationless current in principle. Okay, so that was our next effort. We wanted to show, or we wanted to see whether these states survive up to room temperature or not, and whether their spin momentum locking uh, is, is robust against temperature variation. Uh, this also, uh, the, this, is, this is demonstrated in this third paper that even at uh, 300 K room temperature, you have spin momentum locking, this half Dirac gas uh, topological invariant surviving there. So this is kind of a pushing topological physics to, to, to some real extremes. Like uh, before this type of work, topological physics was mostly confined to a quantum hull, quantum spin hull type of thing at kind of tens of millikelvin temperature and with a, typically with a strong magnetic field. Uh, but this is an extreme example that there is no magnetic field. You are at room temperature and, and your spin momentum locking half Dirac gas is, 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 uh, is robust, it's there. So this paper for probably uh, for that reason, this paper is cited a lot by uh, engineers and material scientists because this provides a, a basis for future development of uh, devices to, uh, uh, to I mean, devices to incorporate this uh, dissipation less type uh, feature into a, um, device setting. Okay, but not just that application aspect. Why this this uh, field took off? There are a lot of uh, other physics happening. And this is a 2011 slide. Uh, all the papers are before 2011. You can see uh, within a few years uh, a lot was happening. So one interesting thing is that uh, uh, what happens if you magnetize a topological insulator. Another thing is what happens if you introduce superconductivity. And those two areas have taken off in last 10 years or so. Okay, so um, before going to, going to that, let me make a conceptual connection. So what topological insulator gave us is, is access to a single Dirac fermion. And once you have a single Dirac fermion, described by Dirac, Dirac equation, then you are kind of in the quantum field theory uh, regime. And uh, then you can ask all sorts of quantum field theory type questions. 
So if you have a single Dirac fermion, which is not there in graphene, there is Dirac fermion in graphene, uh, but it's not a single degenerate, uh, single Dirac fermion. A topological insulator surface is like one quarter of graphene. So then you are in a position to ask what happens um, if you, well, then, then you might realize half fermions. So there are different types of half fermions. One example is a vile fermion. In QFT, you can think of uh, two vile fermions of different chirality make up a single Dirac fermion. Or you can also think of uh, uh, a real solution to the Dirac equation, those are Majoranas. And a lot um, has been happening at Maryland and other places on these directions. Uh, so Majoranas are interesting for many different reasons. One, one thing is that since this is a real solution to the Dirac equation, then uh, its complex conjugate is, is the same thing. So in, in this sense, Majorana is its own anti-Majorana uh, because it's a wave function is real. Uh, so uh, shortly after topological insulator, the, uh, there is a race to realize these things uh, using topological insulator or not. In my lab, we have been trying to uh, use topological insulator or at least topological insulator concepts to find other materials uh, to realize these things. So uh, one such realization, as I said, that if you break time reversal symmetry uh, or inversion symmetry of, of from a single Dirac fermion in uh, of a Dirac fermion in 3D, then you'll get file fermion. And if you introduce superconductivity, you'll get Majorana. And then you can also introduce superconductivity in vial setting, and that will give you a vial Majorana. So, uh, so all these things are at play. So uh, as I said, let me uh, focus on the magnetic states that, that, that I promised. Uh, so uh, starting with topological insulator, you can try to uh, put magnetic impurities on the surface or in the bulk. Uh, to magnetize the, the whole system. And uh, the initial expectation or theoretical expectation is that this will break, this will open a gap in the Dirac, uh, Dirac node because now, uh, now this, uh, this backscattering is allowed. So we wanted to probe that with spectroscopy. If we put magnetic impurities on the surface, what happens to the Dirac node? So early on, around before 2010, we could see some sort of gapping, but in real experimental, uh, real materials in experiments are far more complicated. And we found e examples that where uh, there is no intrinsic time reversal breaking, but the surface Dirac fermion can be gapped by chemistry. So the experimental, uh, uh, connection to, to, uh, to how to probe topological protection by time reversal symmetry is more complicated than the theory suggests. So we had to introduce a number of experimental uh, aspects uh, or experimental algorithms to distinguish a gap, Dirac gap, massive Dirac fermion, whether, whether a ma the, the question is whether a massive Dirac fermion is topological and So how do we address that experimentally? So one, one thing we, uh, we applied uh, is that look at the surface circular dichroism uh, coming with uh, different helicity photons and see whether the surface is dichroic. And uh, we can also look track magnetization on the surface and see whether the massive Dirac fermion state or the gap opening we see is correlated with that. Uh, another uh, check would be to see when magnetization disappears, whether the gap uh, closes, you recover the Dirac fermion or not. It turned out even th uh, those systematics would not uniquely identify a topological gap. So then we had to uh, further explore the system with spin resolve ARPES, look at the spin texture of the band near the Dirac node uh, that is disrupted. 
and see what type of spin texture is realized. So we introduced this idea that if we are using a thin film, this will also open a gap in the Dirac uh, fermion channel because now the top and bottom surfaces talk to each other. So there is kind of like tunneling and that will introduce a gap, but the spin texture is different. Um, uh, it's not this hedgehog type that uh, if you place Fermi level here, you'll see a polarized surface Fermi surface. That is not the case. If you place Fermi level here, uh, the Fermi surface is not polarized. So, so then this allowed us to, uh, and then we can also, we also played with non-magnetic doping versus magnetic doping, whether the gap is increasing, gap size is increasing with magnetic doping um, or not. Uh, it, it, it has its own complication. It also introduces additional disorder and disorder can uh, change the chemistry of the surface uh, in, a, uh, in some unexpected ways. So another thing is that we, we introduce how to uh, uh, tune the chemical potential. It's like chemical gating under UHP and see whether we can uh, uh, probe and then probe the Berry phase uh, in a spectroscopic way and whether there's a very phase tunability. And uh, so all these tests, so, uh, for example, if, uh, if it's time reversal invariant texture, meaning non-magnetic uh, Dirac fermion, um, or even if I have time reversal invariant texture with a tunneling gap, uh, this would be its signature that there is no polarization of the surface Fermi surface if you tune Fermi level there. Uh, whereas if you tune Fermi level here, your surface Fermi surface will be uh, spin polarized. So these systematics allowed us to identify uh, experimentally uh, to identify a topological gap, a churn gap in a magnet, okay? So once we have these these, uh, these experimental uh, procedures to tell whether you have a churn gap or not, we could explore other materials that are cleaner. Uh, so topological, magnetically doped topological insulators turned out to be very complicated. So then we moved to other cleaner systems without doping, natural, so for example, Kagome magnets. Kagome lattice has interesting thing uh, that you have Dirac fermion at the K point and uh, you also have flat band. So this is before uh, twisted bilayer graphene. We were in, uh, trying to think how to bring in flat band and topological physics together in a single system so that you could probe uh, the interaction, interplay between topology and strong interaction. So, uh, so some of the Kagome magnets have uh, magnetic, uh, moments, uh, out of plane magnetic moments. So the out of plane magnetic moments could uh, introduce a churn gap. So we, in, uh, we showed that this happens in a number of compounds. Uh, uh, first, with, uh, first with this iron tin compound, this compound was also studied by a group at MIT using transport primarily. Uh, so we are probing this with um, STM uh, so, uh, so we wanted to see what is the electronic structure, which is difficult to do that with RPA. RPA will pick signal from a few layers, top few layers. Uh, so we wanted to create a contrast by layer by layer electronic structure, Kagome layer and non-Kagome layer. So this uh, STM topography allows us to do that. So one thing in this compound we uh, we found it by surprise, it was not predicted in any theory or anything. So we saw that the quasi-particle interference, even though the, uh, the lattice is three-fold or six-fold, uh, it's uh, electronic structure, the quasi-particle interference is two-fold, even without applying field or anything. So that was a bit surprising, but then we, when we applied a strong out-of-plane field, then it recovered that six-fold uh, symmetry. Uh, whereas if we apply in-plane field, then we see that this 
twofold axis, we can rotate uh, with a magnetic field, we can rotate. Uh, rotate the pneumatic axis. So this is interesting from the point of view that it's already, uh, there is some strong correlation in this system that, uh, that created a pneumatic state that the electronic structure, electronic uh, state is kind of ignoring the lattice symmetry. It's, it's in a lower symmetry state. And uh, what is interesting or unique about this system that uh, electronic pneumatic systems uh, existed before, but what is new about here is in the system is that we can tune this with a magnetic field. Um, I don't know of any electronic pneumatic system where you can control extra with an external field. So this is uh, this is interesting on its own right, and it also it's a multiband system. It has more complicated energy uh, uh, spectrum. And uh, it turns out some, there's some theoretical proposal that uh, it, you have to go beyond cane melee type scenario with spin, or, uh, spin orbit, but you also have to consider some sort of spin very phase. So let me summarize uh, what was happening in topological or churn magnetism uh, over the last 10 years or so. So then in the first uh, material, where we observed churn gap was this manganese dope bismuth uh, based TIs, and then um, uh, chrom in chromium dope bismuth based TIs uh, uh, groups in China, Xinhua group uh, found this quantum anomalous Hall effect, but it's at very low temperature, millikelvin, tens of millikelvin temperature. The gap is small, and you cannot really do spectroscopy or detailed study of this state or what type of magnetism has been realized there. You just do transport, you see quantization and that's, that's mostly. It. So then uh, we then uh, uh, showed that in Kagome magnets, you can uh, see both explore magnetism and churn gap and clearly show that without doing transport, there is, you can probe churn gap, which is important because then that allows you how to engineer the material to a desired goal. So what is that goal? So the goal is to identify, find a topological magnet in the quantum limit whose edge states are accessible and now levels accessible and churn gap is large, possibly operating at room temperature, which is, uh, should be more than 25 millivolt or so. And also uh, there is some sort of interaction. So there's more fun in the system that you can prove some many body physics. So this is, uh, so then uh, last year we introduced, based on our past experience, uh, we discovered this compound that this rare earth manganese tin 166 series has some of these properties uh, with, with a gap very large, uh, that's uh, room temperature accessible thing. Uh, so let me, and, and additionally, this, this compound is extremely clean when you have terbium in there. Um, and uh, it, uh, not only that, with terbium you have out of plane moment so that the churn gap is largest. In these compounds, the gap is smaller because the out of plane component of the moment is small. Uh, so the terbium compound has, it has this <coughs> double advantage that it's very clean within our STM scan we can find uh, large regions with no single defect visible. And uh, to show how clean this sample can be is uh, we, we compare that with other Kagome layers we studied before or other groups have studied. You can see uh, the topography image is quite, uh, quite messy compared to this one. So then we realize that this is, this is the one this is the material. This is what I was saying, that just observing quantum anomalous Hall effect in some system is good, but it doesn't tell you how to engineer it to a desired goal. That's why you need to find a system where you can do, understand the system spectroscopically in great detail so that you can engineer it further to a, a desired goal. So this is what <coughs> we were excited about. And indeed, uh, when we applied a field, on the Kagome layer with STM, we can see when we're on the Kagome layer, 
clearly, we can see DOS modulation in the non kagome layer. We don't see DOS modulation. So, in other words, this DOS <coughs> modulation, modulation of electronic uh, state with a applied field, is is related to the kagome layer. Now, when we uh, look at the full details of this modulation, and uh, it becomes clear that we are seeing um, uh, nonlinear Landau levels, uh, which is signaling Dirac physics. It's kind of like uh, early graphene experiments, um, uh, except that we are now doing that on a topological menu. Uh, so now uh, we can uh, surprisingly, I did not immediately believe that, but surprisingly we can fit it with the uh, with the uh, uh, Dirac, massive Dirac Fermion Landau level spectrum and extract a gap of 34 millivolts. So this is certainly bigger than 25 millivolt uh, limit uh, search we were having. And then, uh, then uh, but the Fermi level is the Dirac point is 130 millivolt away. So in other words, in this system, the natural chemical potential is not inside the gap. So, uh, so we cannot, uh, we, using transport on the pristine material, we cannot access the chiral edge state or check whether it's topological in a bound, bulk boundary sense. Because this, uh, this formula is just telling you that you have massive Dirac fermion, but how do you know this massive Dirac fermion is topological? So the topological proof comes from the fact that by fitting this, we know where is the Fermi level or what is the gap location uh, in the energy axis, 130 millivolt. <coughs> so when we're scanning the step edge, step edge of the sample, where you expect the edge state, then only at the 30, 130 millivolt bias voltage, you see that this step edge uh, lights up. Uh, so meaning that there is propagating edge state, uh, chiral edge state uh, here, uh, but not at any other energy. So in other words, when you're outside the gap, these states are damped. So only um, inside the gap, uh, churn gap or uh, 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 Dirac Fermion, massive Dirac Fermion gap, you have this edge state. And with STM QPI, we know that this is dissipation, I mean, this is, backscattering free. So this is a chiral edge state. We also checked that the, on a side cleave, this does not appear, uh, so a side cleave is gapped. So this, this is uh, quite remarkable. I found it uh, quite uh, surprising that the transport, when we uh, compare with the transport data, we fit the anomalous hull signal in this compound and, and uh, we find that the gap uh, transport fit gives a gap of 34 millivolts and the Fermi level uh, shift is 130 millivolt. So this is quite remarkable. I, I don't know of any spectroscopy agreeing so much with transport. It's, it's, um, it's very uh, remarkable, remarkable, probably some material co coincidence, but on the other hand, it's so, the material is so clean it's not too surprising either. Uh, so we have to uh, uh, worry about modeling disorder less so than in other compounds. So this allows us to look at the quantum limit and how much we should do to look at the quantum limit. So this is what I was saying. Uh, you can have quantum anomalous hull state in some sample, but if you're gonna do detail uh, spectroscopy or measurement, you don't know how to optimize it to a desired goal. So this system allows us to do that. So we, we, we keep working on that. So now let, let's uh, move to the next uh, example of topological magnet. So now that we know how to do churn gap or topological gap in magnet. So uh, back in 2010, 11, we were uh, exploring a band inversion transition in a topological insulator. So then at the band inversion point, you have a 3D Dirac fermion, right? And when you have a 3D Dirac fermion, then you can magnetize it as uh, uh, we know, it can only split into a pair of bile fermions. So we were trying to 
magnetize this Dirac critical point in a topological insulator system. And, uh, but then it turned out, uh, as I said, the magnetization, uh, magnetizing topological materials is a very tricky job. And even if you magnetize it, the gap may be small, ARPES may not be able to see. So that was happening back then. Uh, we could not resolve the, the vial splitting. Uh, it's, it's a resolution issue of ARPES. But then uh, guided by these ideas, we also start in the database to find inversion broken materials that, that search was led by Suyang Zhu and Ilya Bilopolsky. Uh, so then we came up with this simple algorithm. If you start with a topological insulator, how to create a vial semi-metal and how to find its analog in the materials database. This is a very simple primitive way of doing it. Uh, so this is how we got to this uh, tantalum arsenide class. And then in experiments, we also introduced a new uh, different way of proving vial state without comparing with theory. Um, of course, we, we have done uh, band calculation of this system uh, in this paper, but we, in experiments, we do not use our calcul theoretical prediction to prove it. We did that independent of that experiment. In experiments, one should be able to do, one should be able to uh, tell whether something strange is realized or not, because we know electronic uh, state and Fermi surface of other systems that have been realized in the past. So we, we, we realized that if you do a loop cut in momentum space, then you'll, uh, if, uh, what is strange is that you find chiral edge modes co-propagate. And that is what we showed in 2014, another earlier science paper with the same first author. Uh, uh, this uh, chiral edge mode propagating is a signature of, of um, of the Berry curvature field uh, divergence. So then, uh, then we can uh, also put the bulk RPS measured with high photon energy and, and uh, surface RPS with uh, low photon energy. And we see that when you do the bulk RPS, we find two dots. When we do surface, we find arc-like state. And, and what is interesting is that these arcs terminate and the bulk uh, Fermi surface are bulk, uh, bulk uh, dot states. So this is so, so this is bulk boundary correspondence. So it, these arcs terminated the vial nodes. So so this is this was our theory independent proof of our band structure calculation without comparing with band structure or anything uh, uh, experimental proof of. Uh, vial and uh, Fermi arc states. And uh, there, uh, there, uh, there are other groups working on this thing. Uh, for example, MIT group uh, worked on this uh, photonic crystal, which is kind of bosonic. There's vial uh, state, but this is not quite vial fermion. And there's also a group uh, from IOP there in their first paper, they were doing uh, Fermi arc. Uh, and subsequently, then many groups uh, confirmed and reconfirmed these results. So then I, we use this type of ideas, experimental ideas and theoretical input from Burke of book balance paper to create a vial magnet. Uh, it's, not, it's not in their paper, they introduced this uh, a node loop idea that uh, you can have um, a, a protected crossing, but then this is a set of, in the form of a uh, loop. And then uh, if, it, if this is topological, then there will be states connecting. If you have particle hole symmetry, there, there will be very narrow flat band type thing. Uh, but in reality, finding particle hole symmetry is difficult. So then you'll have some curvature to the bands. So we use that idea to interlink the, those that sort of loops and look for materials where those uh, links are protected by mirror symmetry or um, in the presence of time reversal invariance. And then uh, by extending those ideas uh, into this interlinked chain link states, then we also then 
um, search in the database to find the material where this type of thing will be realized. So this is our prediction of a 3D topological magnet, this uh, cobalt manganese gallium system. It's, it's a bit messy. There are many loops that touch or link, and this is a cubic system. So there's too much symmetry in this system, okay? <clears throat> so the basic idea is that these vial lines, they are on this loop, every point is a vial point, every crossing is a vial point. And then these uh, vial points are connected by a arc, but then there's many, many arcs. So it creates a drum head type state. Uh, so then we used ARPES to visualize this state. This is a very, uh, um, um, band struck. this material has a complicated multiband structure. For example, in some part of the momentum space, you have this vial crossing, but if you're, if you're at an energy higher than that, the crossing, uh, the, the band uh, shifts like that. And here, this is reversing. So this is in the theoretical uh, uh, prediction uh, from our paper where, uh, how to locate uh, the crossing and it's nearby uh, states. So then we see that in the actual ARPES image, this thing, this part, and then when we lower uh, energy, go to higher binding energy, then we see this point, this vial crossing, and then uh, it moves away. So this, so we use this type of construction to locate these vial points, uh, the nearby, uh, guided by DFT and DBT. So uh, by doing that all over the 3D Brion zone, we uh, 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 locate all these loops and stuff. So one, one particular cut is shown here that we can, we can trace, trace these vial nodes forming a loop. And, uh, and then, uh, then we can um, identify these various branches, but this requires, the symmetry requires either polarization dependent arpas, which we did not do here. Here we just use guideline from uh, theory, DFT to identify those branch. But then having those vial loops doesn't necessarily tell you it's topological, um, at least from my point of view in an experimental sense, we have to find the bulk boundary correspondence. In other words, do uh, the vial points connect to create a drum head state? So in other words, are there states that are non-dispersive in the KZ direction. So that's what we do by changing photon energy. We, um, it's the same sample, only thing we have changes, use different photons and we see that these states do not disperse, meaning that they are KZ independent. So then these states in the momentum space, they connect those vial lines. So that is, um, that is, uh, what is expected in a topological system. Those vial points would be connected by states like Fermi arc, generalization of Fermi arc uh, type of thing. So then these are, so that, that, that is a way we can track the drum head states. So now I showed a lot of band structure mapping and a lot of too much spectroscopy. Why should you believe me that this is such a complicated system? So we, we developed a check by, um, okay, so if, what, do, how do we know we did not miss a band somewhere um, uh, to, uh, so what we did is that we took all these ARPES data and uh, optimized DFT prediction of, and then use DFT to calculate the very curvature field distribution or quantum geometry of this sample. Now, if you have, quantum geometry in your hand, then you can calculate transport, at least certain types of transport that are related to ground state properties. For example, uh, anomalous hull transport or quantum anomalous hull transport. So this is what we did. Um, uh, this is done by my postdoc, Go Ching Chang, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is that uh, the, this anomalous hull, we predicted this in this compound, we predicted that the uh, we also know the Fermi level in this compound in the real in the real compounds, which is uh, advantage here, which is it's difficult to determine that theoretically. 
So ARPES and DFT together, we predicted that the animalus hull uh, conductivity would be about 1,000, 900 to 1,000 in this compound. And uh, you can see it's uh, away from the singularity. Uh, so the, the Fermi level is not close, uh, very close to the vial node where you expect divergence. Uh, so we are away from the divergence and, and then the experiments, transport experiments were done afterwards. And indeed in the animalus hull scaling, uh, when you look at the rho AH uh, uh, versus rho square XX, then you see that this is about 900. So this is another, uh, uh, th this is what I meant by evidence that we did not miss a band. If we miss a band, our baby curvature field or quantum geometry calculation would be totally messed up. And then our prediction of transport will not work. And, and so this is our proof that spectroscopy and transport uh, uh, are in correspondence in this very complex um, topological magnet. Okay, so I'm uh, coming, approaching my conclusion. So in last 10 years or so, we have explored a number of topological magnets. We developed uh, procedures, how to identify churn magnet. We pushed it, the gap uh, size to the room temperature limit. Um, and uh, we also found um, some sort of pneumatic uh, state uh, signature of correlation. And we showed uh, uh, in a number of cases like the churn magnet case and also this uh, vial magnet case that uh, spectroscopy and transport are in agreement. Uh, so, uh, so this is a general theme in my lab developing. Uh, we, 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 are, uh, we are closely, I just hired two transport postdoc. So we, we have been doing a lot of spectroscopy, but now I'm strengthening my transport wing uh, so that we can um, uh, we can have a more comprehensive uh, approach to understanding the topological phenomena um, in, in, in all these compounds. And, and this uh, spectroscopy and transport together is the way to go to optimize these materials for better functionality, which is a, which is, uh, which is a push toward finding applications. So I, I, uh, I, I kind of try to give a overview of what is going on in topological magnet field without giving you many technical details that you expect in a seminar. So, but I, I invite you to look at a number of review papers we have written over the last 10 years or so. The, these papers sort of um, give you a lot of those details that I, that I, that I missed here. Okay, so, so my last uh, uh, sentence would be the topological insulator has inspired us to explore uh, um, exotic things in, in kind of matter like that with analog in kind of field theory, um, like vial and Maharana type of thing. And research in both directions are uh, moving along. Uh, and, Particularly in Maryland, there's a lot of work on Marana and also some work on file channel. And it's it's a, a inspiring and contributing to the field in a in a greater aspect. Thank you. All right. All right, the field is open for questions. And particularly, we encourage students to, to pipe up and ask. Don't let the faculty hog everything. Uh, obviously, you ha really have to know how to look uh, at these systems to figure out how they work with RPs and the like. Um, whereas with, let's say, an ordinary magnet, they're, they're very simple things that you do, you know, uh, the forces and, and interactions that are easily seen independently. Could you describe sort of um, uh, a simple device that one might make 
from any of these topological materials. And I don't mean yeah. something that's going to replace the transistor, but just, you know, I don't know, some mm -hmm. three-terminal yeah, 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 yeah. instance yeah. So, or something like that. Yeah, there is generally uh, the number of, there are few groups pursuing uh, topological materials as a basis for their device or uh, device related research. Um, so there is a large effort, as you know, this national NQI on, in trying to make topological qubits. I'm not talking about that. That's, that's Maharana related thing. Jay knows uh, a lot about that. Uh, so let me give you one example from the stuff I presented today. Uh, it's okay. a wider field. So now if you go, uh, if I go back, I, I showed that the chiral edge state, uh, the chiral edge state is, um, let me go back even to the first slide, first or second slide. I should have just, yes. uh, okay, so let me, maybe even here. So if I have, uh, okay, so this is, um, it would be even easier to go back here. So, it, so the chiral edge state is the quantum top, uh, I mean the new topological analog of the quantum Hall effect. So this edge state is dissipation less so now if you apply a field here on this part of the sample and then you have, uh, you attach another sample but apply a field down. So then uh, these two edge states propagate in the same direction by the handedness, right? So that means at the interface of these two layers, you create a dissipation less channel and this channel can uh, work as some sort of interconnect. And people have shown by uh, theoretical calculation that the, uh, if you have a large enough, large gap churn magnet uh, with different domain, in, the, in one domain it's uh, like filled up in other domain is like, so then you can use this interface as a dissipation less interconnect which is uh, which dissipation is much probably thousand or ten thousand times lower than the aluminium interconnects you use in silicon technology. So this is this project was funded by um, by DARPA uh, a few years ago, but the uh, uh, but the main limitation was that how do you find a magnet large enough? large gap so that it, it will work at, it's not going to, re, it's not like superconductivity, but it can beat, since there is no room temperature superconductor, uh, but the main goal is to lower dissipation, not necessarily go to zero. So this is the uh, most promising uh, uh, materials basis we have, where the effects have, have been demonstrated that may potentially work. And some people are uh, working on that. So I, I did not want I did not want to emphasize my um, application aspect. But when I talked about these things, that this room temperature topological insulator with a large gap, uh, and then I moved to magnets with a room temperature uh, upper uh, room temperature topology. This this last example. Uh, this is what I was uh, thinking about. I, I meant to be saying that the gap is so large that if you take these magnets and then uh, have two domains adjacent to each other, then at the interface, there will be a dissipationless current at room temperature uh, in principle. And this inelastic scattering, at least it would be near dissipationless. Uh, so then this is our hope. This is our uh, current hope uh, uh, when we don't have a room temperature superconductor. So that is the uh, application oriented front based on the part of the talk I, I present, I mean, the stuff I presented in my talk. But then there are other topological things that have other type of applications.
yeah. for example. That's, that's, that's very helpful. But I mean, what are sort of the, uh, the major obstacles towards application? Yeah, Just a strong to... field to require? Or... Yeah, uh, these are all very good questions. The first obstacle is, is what I was pointing out that the, here, that the gap is very small. There's quantum anomalous hall, you see these things operate at room uh, millikelvin temperature. Um, but so we have to find a large gap system. So which is uh, there, it's not only just room temperature operation, it's also makes the topological system far more robust. The larger the gap, topological gap, the more robust the edge state. Uh, and it's not just from device point of view, it's also fundamental. You can do more fundamental physics out of it. So that one obstacle is to find a clean material that has large gap. And this is what I described that this compound is very clean compared to the pre-existing compound. We cannot even see a defect in my STM view. And it has a large gap, uh, uh, 34 millivolts. And then the next step, what is next step? Then, then I showed a drawback that the, the Dirac point is, this number should be zero, but it's 130 millivolt, meaning that the Fermi level is not here, it's somewhere around here. So then uh, we have to tune the material, dope the material to get Fermi level up here. But then when you try to dope, then you are not, as clean as like this, then you have dopants, then it will create some disorder and it will destroy certain properties, not all, but still. Uh, so this is what I was trying to say. How to go to quantum limit, you have to dope something. So then you, the price you pay, the, the gain is that then you are at the quantum, this operate, operation limit, your Fermi level should be here. Uh, inside the gap so that when you do transport in a device setting, you should only see the edge state, not the Dirac state, uh, just the edge state. But then the price you pay is that you're messing up by introducing these things and it will look a bit like that. But then these compounds have a much smaller gap and they're much more um, non-ideal. So. So the fact that we have a situation is like that, a situation like that is already an important advance. And the most important advance is that the gap is large and even though you have to do it. So ideally uh, to realize your dream for the, our field, we want to find a material where in this limit, this type of gap, but we don't have to do it. So then it's clean and it's there. And then we have to, find how to make, uh, how to create this, how to find these domain structures. That's another uh, uh, class of material science that material science and engineering microstructure has to be engineered. Um, so then that is, then once that is done, then a device would operate in the expected region. So we are, um, we are uh, still uh, 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 obviously in the physics regime that we're trying to uh, uh, use topological uh, knowledge and band structure knowledge to, to uh, optimize a material that will, uh, we are doing all this spectroscopy, these spectroscopic details are telling us which way to optimize in dealing the material further toward a desired goal. Mm -hmm. And this is what I was saying. If you find a material like quantum anomalous salt original state, you just have it, you show a physics effect, but then if you don't do spectroscopy, you don't know how to improve, how, know the microscopic details, how to improve it by further engineering. That knowledge, it's like black box. So this is the, value of spectroscopic detail, the all, we want to know all the microscopic details. So we know which year to engineer the system or some design code. 